Hey, first grade. Welcome to your next lesson. Cartoon Mr. Rickman here, and we're going to talk about shape making and actually print making both. So, in this project, I'm going to talk to you about how artists basically take a complicated object and they just break it down into simple shapes that you guys already know. Circles, rectangles. So you can see that these are artists who broke down a fly or a horse head or a flamingo into just ovals and circles and triangles and rectangles, the stuff that you guys all know how to draw. And that helps them create the shapes of different things, animals, hands, you name it. So do you remember last year from this video, the shape song? I linked that down below in case you wanted to watch that again, but this time we're going to watch another video that goes a little bit deeper about shapes. Played a prominent role in the history of art. Looking at still lifes of fruit is a useful way of studying how artists approach making shapes. Shape is one of the seven elements. Okay, so here are examples of how professional artists have used shapes to make different pieces of art. There's Jasper Johns, there's Frank Stella, created a lot of different shapes, P.A. Mondrian, and then Wassily Kandinsky is a master at geometric shapes, and then Matisse, Henri Matisse, also used a lot of geometric, or I'm sorry, freeform or organic shapes. So let's talk about what those are. You guys are used to learning about shapes. You learn about them in math all the time. But in art, we also talk about free form or organic shapes. Those are shapes that you find in nature. So we're going to be doing both and studying both of these. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you your materials, and this is what you're going to be creating. So we'll start with just a regular piece of paper. And you don't really have to trace the squares, but I want you to actually practice drawing three or geometric shapes and three organic shapes. And so I divided up my paper into three and I start with a trapezoid, simple trapezoid, and then I draw a parallelogram. And then I just took two overlapping triangles and crossed them over and made a star. Free form or organic shapes, I did a cloud and a little like slime drip thing and then it looks like a leaf. And then I go ahead and I'm gonna give you guys um, some of these little foam things and then you're going to draw the shapes on and then you're going to cut out the shapes and you're going to have what's called a positive shape and a negative shape and you can see that I'm kind of dividing them up into positive shapes on the left side and negative shapes on the right side negative space and so you can see that I kind of changed up a few of my shapes but basically all I'm doing is with a pencil drawing on the foam and cutting them out I changed my little drippy one into like a splat. I thought that would be more interesting. And then finally I changed my leaf into a feather. I thought that'd be better. I drew it and I made a mistake so I just flipped it over and drew it on the back. So I'm just cutting these out. The foam cuts really easily and you're going to divide them up into positive and negative space. So let's talk about what positive and negative space is. Because some of you guys might be sitting there thinking, space, doesn't that mean like outer space? I'm not talking about like this. Hey you, you stink! Why do you have to be so negative? Don't be negative space, say something positive like, you smell like roses. They don't smell like roses, they smell like my dog's feet after a long run. They smell terrible. I'm tired of all this negativity, space. Be kind. No, I'm not talking about that kind of positive and negative space. I'm talking about this. When you look at this, sometimes this is called a Rubens vase, and sometimes people look at this and they see a vase, like on the left side. Or if you look at it differently, you could see two faces staring at each other. Some famous logos often use negative, positive and negative space, like the FedEx logo. Sometimes when people look at FedEx, they see the words Fed and X, but if you look at the space in between the letters, you can see a little arrow. And there are a lot of logos that you'll see that use positive and negative space. So 
what you're going to do after you cut out all your shapes is you're going to lay them out and you're going to alternate between positive space and negative space. You see how it makes like a checkerboard pattern? And then I'm going to give you a piece of wood and what you're going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the back of your spaces and stick it to this piece of wood and then you're going to bring it over to me and I'm going to put ink on it and then you're going to take it back over to your paper and you're going to press that down. That's is what's called printmaking. So you're going to make these prints in order, making sure you alternate between positive and negative spaces. And you're going to just go ahead and make your prints almost like in a checkerboard pattern. Now, you might notice that in sometimes in printmaking, there are parts that are lighter and sometimes there are parts that are more colorful. And that's actually the beautiful part about printmaking is it's not at all exactly the same. So you can see that there's sometimes there's parts that are missing and sometimes there are parts that are not. But when you get it back to your table, you're just going to need to make sure you place it carefully and then push down real hard for about five seconds. And then when you pick it up, you'll be able to take it back off because the glue wouldn't have dried. It'll, it's just strong enough to hold it for a little bit, but not forever. And then after you've done all of your shapes, it should fill the entire paper with prints, both positive and negative spaces, and it's just enough to fill perfectly. Great job, first grade.